We have some geometry this month, so you know I got my man Harvey to help us out. How's it going, man? Good to see you. All right, let's get to work here. We've got oh, a bunch of circles, four non-overlapping congruent circles. Now, in these three, each one is tangent to the other two. And this one out here, this one's tangent to this one. And then we have a triangle out here. It's tangent to all four of the circles. And all four circles have radius one. We have to find the length of FG, this side down here. All right. I got nothing, Harv. I need some help already. What you got? What's that? Oh, you want me to try something before I ask for help? Oh, man, it's going to be like that? Try something before I ask for help. Actually, that's kind of good advice. Yeah, I know you know. All right, let's get to work. We got a bunch of circles, lines tangent to the circles. You've got lines tangent to circles, you draw the radii to the points of tangency. Because that gives you right angles. Got a bunch of right angles. Here, got one here, got one here, got one here, and here. And then you have tangent circles, you connect their centers. These two, connect these two, connect these, connect these, and ah, may as well connect those as well. All right, now what do we have? Well, let's see. We got a bunch of radii here. Let me go ahead and mark those. Radius, 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 radius. These all have length one. So I look right here, and I got these right angles right there and right there, and then these two sides, they're both length one. This, this is a rectangle. And this piece right there, that's a radius, has length 1. This has length 1, so AB has length 2. That means this piece over here, that has length 2. Well, that's pretty cool. Do that down here, this has length 2. Down here, this has length 2 as well. All right, now what? Well, this has length 1, this is length 1, 1 and 1. Wait, that means AB is 2, BC is 2, AC is 2. A, B, C, it's equilateral, Harv. Yeah, yeah, I know you know. All right, so we're going to label some angles in here. 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. And, well, what else do we know? That means this is 120 degrees. Because that's a straight line, because B, C, and D, they're all exactly one above F, G. And, well, this triangle's isosceles, because A, C, and C, D, they're both two. That means this is 30 degrees, this is 30 degrees, and well, this is a right angle, this is a right angle. It's got rectangles out here, and rectangles here. That means this is 90, this is 90, this is 90, that means this angle right in here is 90 as well. This thing up here, that's a square. So, this is one, this is one. Now what? tried a lot here, Harv. You're going to help me out? You want me to keep trying? I'm almost there. We're almost there. Let's keep trying. All right, I've got some 60 degree angles, 30 degree angles. I should look for a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Well, there's one right here. Oh, I bet the big one's a 30, 60, 90 as well. Let's see if we can prove that. Well, we know this is 90 degrees because we got this square up here, but what about this angle down here? Well, this is a right angle from the rectangle. Got another rectangle here, and that's 60 degrees. So we got 90 and 90 and 60. Add those up. You got 240. That means this one in here is 120 degrees. Right in there. We got a right angle right here, a right angle right here. That tells me that this down here, that's 60 degrees. This whole big thing is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So all I have to do is find this side or this side, and I'll be able to figure out what this thing is. I got most of this side already. I've got the one up there, the two there. What about this piece here? Oh, more 30, 60, 90 triangles. We can draw this line right here. Cuts this 60 degrees right in half. We got 30 there and 30 there. You got 60 there. You got 60 there. This little thing right here, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And this side, that's a radius of the circle. That's one. That's a short leg. So the long leg here has length square root of three. 
So now we see that this whole thing, this whole EF, is 3 plus the square root of 3. And that's the short leg of this enormous 30, 60, 90 triangle. So the hypotenuse, we just take the short leg and double it. It has length 6 plus 2 times the square root of 3. We found the right answer. Didn't need your help at all. How about that? We did pretty well. What's that? Wait, where are you going? We got another problem here, Harp. Hold on, hold on. Got another problem here. What's that? Oh, I don't need your help? You're going to be like that now. Thinks I don't need his help. Maybe he's right. Let's see if we can solve this without Harv. All right, we've got a unit square for congruent non-overlapping equilateral triangles. They're all little triangles. We have to find the largest possible side length of one of these triangles. And we don't have Harvey to help us anymore. He didn't help us very much in the last problem. Well, let's get in here and try something, because, well, we can't ask him for help. I'm going to start off, I'm going to call a side length each equilateral triangle, we'll call that x. And we know that this whole side of the square over here, this whole thing is 1. Well, now what? I think I could use Harvey's help here. All right. Um, hmm. well, let's label some angles. I know I've got an equilateral triangle here. i got 60 degrees. Uh, 60 degrees. Maybe we can find some 30, 60, 90 triangles here, too. I got 60 degrees up here, because this is equilateral. That means this little piece here is 30. And this piece over here, this angle is 120. And that means this little angle down here is 30. We can build a 30, 60, 90 triangle by just dropping this altitude right here. This little thing is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And this triangle is isosceles, so this, this altitude splits this in half. And we know the side length of the equilateral triangle is x, so each of these little pieces, this is x over 2, and this is x over 2. So we have the long leg of this 30, 60, 90 triangle is x over 2. So to get the short leg, you just divide by the square root of 3. So this short leg here, that'll be x divided by 2 times the square root of 3. And then you just double that to get the hypotenuse. That's this piece right here. So that piece is just x divided by the square root of 3. And now we can build an equation. x plus x over the square root of 3 has to equal 1. And now we turn this somewhat scary looking geometry problem into a linear equation. And we can definitely solve that without Harvey. First, I'm going to get rid of the fraction. I'm going to multiply both sides by the square root of 3. I have x times the square root of 3 plus x equals the square root of 3. Now I'm going to factor out an x. And there we go. Now we just divide both sides by the square root of 3 plus 1. And there is our answer for x. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to multiply this top and bottom by the square root of 3 minus 1. And on top, square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that gives us 3, and minus the square root of 3. And on bottom, we'll end up with square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that's 3. And we'll have a plus square root of 3 and a minus square root of 3. They cancel each other out. And then plus 1 times minus 1 gives us a minus 1. 3 minus 1, that's 2. And check it out. We solved the problem without Harvey. Turned out he was, he was right after all. He usually is.